welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Julie and on this channel we talk about becoming the better version of you. And this is a journey of self-discovery, self-awareness for myself and I'm sharing tips and recommendations that I've found helpful to me. However, I understand that we are all different and so what works for one person may not work for everybody else. If you find some of my tips helpful, I'd love to hear from you. And if you find that you have a very different experience from me, I'd also love to hear from you. Because sometimes what we learn from the people that we are different from, as much as we learn from the people who we have similarities with. So today's topic is time management. And time management has been something I've been always interested in. I've always wanted to manage my time better. And it's something that we should be giving some thought to because if we don't manage our time, our time gets managed for us. And so the more that we are aware of what it is that we're trying to do, then we can make sure that we find the time for it. So time management very closely links to prioritization. And if you don't keep a clear idea of what you're trying to achieve, then it's much harder to get there. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to, and I've mentioned, I, I like to bullet journal. And so this is the very start of my time management uh, technique. And it's quite complicated, but it's because time is difficult. I work part time. I write novels, I attend classes, I have two children and I have a husband and all of these need balancing. And so I've always tried to use better time management in order to get everything done. However, I often fail. <laughs> I don't get everything done that I need to get done. This year I read a life-changing book and it was called 4,000 Weeks. And what I learned, the key takeaway from this book is that we simply can't do it all. And we need to not just say no to the things that don't bring us joy, but we need to say no to the things that aren't going to fill us with happiness that aren't going to bring us that joy. So for example, I would like to paint more. I do like to paint for fun, um, but sometimes I just don't have the time for it. And so I might need to put that aside as it's not something that whilst I enjoy the activity, it's not necessarily bringing enough into my life that I can make the time for it. So that's where prioritization also comes into it. So one of the things that I like to think about or when I look at time management is I start with what is like a yearly view, an annual view. And so at the very start of my calendar, I have the next 12 months. In this, I've put in birthdays, I've put in anniversaries, I've put in school holidays, and I've put in regular recurring meetings. I volunteer with a women's networking organization. And so I've got all of those in there. It means that as I create the month, I can look here and I know what's coming up, but I also know what I want to achieve. So I know when the school holidays are, this makes booking holidays so much easier. I know when people's birthdays are so I can actually get in front and send them a card. Now the next way that I manage my time is I have a monthly view and I actually have 12 of those at least for the next 12 months in advance. And the reason for that is the work that I do I often have bookings six, eight, ten months in advance and so it's a way of me being able to keep oversight on them. Now one of the things I don't do with these monthly spreads is I don't have the weekend. I don't work on weekends so I don't need them. They're not actually a social um, booking, they are specifically to do with work. Then I have a monthly view and I like having a monthly view because it gives me oversight of the whole month. And this is where I transfer things from my yearly view into my monthly view. It lets me know what's coming up, what I need to remember. And I do have both work and social events in here, but it's not a very big calendar. 
And so I always need to be mindful of then how do I break down my day further? And that's where I have a weekly overview. And I've split it into two sides. So on side one, it's events, and on side two is activities. So I can track everything going down vertically. And then at the activities, it might be a little bit more freehand. It might not necessarily correlate with the day. So I might put all of my admin tasks for the week that I've outlined in the monthly goals, and then I can start to attribute time to them. So that's in the journal. So this is my handwritten um, timekeeping. And so this is the one that I always look to first. But then what I do is I have my calendar. And this is a Google Calendar. That's the one that I prefer to use. And I've created what I consider to be a perfect month. And in that perfect month, this is where that key prioritization happens. I know that I have, I need to sleep. So I've put in t time to sleep from 10 till 7, 8, no, from 10, 8, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. because that is my sleep schedule. It works for me. I know not everybody is comfortable with seven hours or less. I do not sleep longer most days, so I will naturally wake up after about seven hours. I then put all of my uh, writing groups, which are in the States. So it's my 6 a.m., they're 6 p.m. And I join all of those. So they go into my calendar on a perfect week. Then I put in, I have a shower. Uh, well, actually I exercise, I do uh, have a shower, then I do breakfast, and then I do journaling. Now, one of the reasons why I make journaling and exercise and eating and showering as part of my regular day is that I do get into a hyper focus mode. So I find it difficult to shift from one activity to the next. And so by putting them in my calendar, I'm creating a level of importance. I'm saying to myself, exercise is a non-negotiable. You need to do it. Therefore, it's in the calendar. You have time in the calendar. And then from there, I have what the key activities that I'd like to do. Generally, the ones that I schedule first are the writing activities. From there, I then will transfer, well, I don't transfer it, it automatically shows up on my regular work calendar. And then each week, I look at the week ahead, make sure that I've got enough time. And then I put in my actual work bookings. And I also have time for preparing for those. I also have time for my personal administration as well as my business administration. I have time to do YouTube channels or my YouTube video. And so what I do is I then play around with those depending on when the work is, depending on what else is happening. And the other thing I do in order for this to be more manageable, I'm very conscious that between each of the, um, or when I schedule something in, I have enough buffer time. Now, buffer time is the time it takes me to either mentally switch from one activity to the next, or it could be to physically do something. So for example, if I have a writing group, it finishes at 7.45, then I need, or 6.45, then I need to be on my bike and do a 30 minute session, but I allocate 45 minutes. And what this means is that if the <laughs> bike doesn't work for whatever reason, which happens occasionally, everything doesn't connect, or I have a chat to my husband before I get on my bike, I'm not stressing out about the time because once I schedule something, I tend to get a little bit um, sort of very much obsessed by doing it. So I try to make sure that I have reasonable amounts of buffer time and then I can prioritize the rest of my day. So for example, today I had to switch things around because I had work this afternoon. But one of the things I've realized is that when I have work, I get dressed up. When I get dressed up, it's a really good opportunity to do some filming because I'm already in the zone. And so now when I look through my week, I've allocated time on a specific day to do YouTube creation, filming, and then I look to see when I actually have work. And then I put a film in after following an actual YouTube. And this way I'm working not just to a rigid schedule, but I'm also trying to think about how to group things so that they make it easier for me. 
Now, one of the things is I go through both at the beginning and at the end of the day and actually see how realistic it was. Did I do all the things that I didn't, uh, that I actually wanted to do? If I don't, why not? And this is part of my journaling exercise as well. I know what I want to do. I figure that out in my journaling in the morning. And then I know what gets in my way. And by giving this some thought, it means that I can streamline what I'm actually booking. Because if you find, if say, for example, something is important. So for, you, for me, it was to get enough time to also do these YouTube videos, but also to publish on Medium. So what I did was I realized I wasn't doing them. So I've created a prioritization by putting them into the schedule. And then what I did was I looked at why I didn't do it on the day, what got in the way. And then I can start to adjust those, those schedules so that I can reduce the things that get in my way. So for example, one of the things I realized that I was preventing me from making my videos was the fact that I had to get dressed up. <laughs> I couldn't do it in my pajamas. And so my general attire when I'm not on camera is to be actually quite casual. So by attaching it to the end of a webinar, I've done an hour of webinar training. I then sit down and I can do one or two videos at the same time. And then I've got time later to actually schedule them in. And so this is one of the things when it comes to time management, you might find there are different systems that every YouTuber can recommend. And I've tried all of them because I really do. I always wanted to find the one that worked for me. And what I've got is really a blend. It's a blend of bullet journaling. It's a blend of type of day theming, and it's a blend of both a manual and a, um, a electronic cam uh, an electronic ca calendar. And by doing all of this, I'm creating a habit of doing the things that are important to me. And I think that's really the key reason why I want to, and I find time management so important, is that it allows me to fully commit to doing something. I want to write a book. Well, I've written five, but I want to edit them. Where is the time in my calendar for that? If I say it's important, I will find that time. I will create that space. I will say no to other things in order for this to happen. So that's my, essentially my system and how I do it. If you have any questions about any of it, I'd love to hear from you and I'd be more than happy to share more information, uh, whether it's about bullet journaling, it's about day theming or prioritization or putting boundaries into place because all of those must be in play in order for a schedule to actually work the way it's meant to. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for joining me today. And if you find there's a topic that you would like me to talk about, please put it in the into the comments. Um, and more importantly, if you like what, um, what I'm sharing, then please join me. I will be releasing uh, my videos uh, on a Thursday morning, I think about 9, 9.30, um, and I'm trying to get a bit of a library in, in advance so that they will start uh, coming out as scheduled. So thank you very much and have a lovely rest of your day.